how are you guys feeling? Who, who of you actually went through the rain and came here? Oh my God, three, four, four hands up. Five, five people came, oh my God, amazing. Big applause for these people. <laughs> Determination. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Um, my name is Alex and we've got Adam. Um, I'm from Sriracha and we'll be talking today about um, decentralized storage powering gaming through an Unreal plugin. Uh, yeah, and my name is Simon Grotki. I'm the CEO of 3S Game Studio, and we created the plugin for Unreal Engine and Unity that empowers IPFS and uh, blockchain gaming. Awesome. Let's move ahead. So, what is Soracha and what is 3S Game Studio? So, first of all, Soracha is a decentralized hot object storage on Filecoin. It's not a hot sauce. I had to establish it a couple of times because Google will correct you when you search for Storaccia. Um, it's production ready and at scale already because the team who has built it has built Web3 storage before, NFT storage, Saturn, a few other things. It's been powering 200,000 users. Um, Saturn had a decentralized CDN with over 5,000 nodes and 10% of the Cloudflare capacity within a year. So that's Storaccia. Yeah, and uh, Trias Game Studio, we are a game development studio, uh, but we wanted to make extremely ambitious games, and apparently the tool sets to make those games weren't existing, so for the past three years, we were mostly developing tools and uh, plugins, and our specialty is uh, multiplayer. Uh, we work currently with basically the entire Web3 space, both in the IPFS uh, part as well as blockchain, uh, so we, we pretty much uh, work with everyone. We got seven years experience in uh, gaming space, 13 years in web, uh, web 3, so almost from the very conception and beginning of it. And currently our plugins are being used by um, over 94,000 developers worldwide. Yeah, so uh, we currently have uh, a game that is in development since uh, last year. Finally, after years of development of tools, uh, we, we made it possible that we are building a game called D20. Uh, I have a short teaser here. It's unannounced project yet, so uh, we don't want to showcase too much. World premiere sneak peek. <clears throat> yeah, uh, so we're using a lot of Web3 technologies in the game itself. Um, the entire login system is actually based on a uh, blockchain. You can log in with external wallets, you can import a wallet, or you can create a wallet that is local. So the game itself is handling all the cryptography, all the signatures, everything. So you are in full custody of anything that you actually have. So it's super easy to onboard new users. Uh, all assets, everything that is visual, all data assets, all data tables, all balance tables are being downloaded from IPFS. And you even have um, full ownership of what do you want to store on your disk, what do you want to uh, get rid of, and it is also managing updates and history of updates through IPNS. So it's the pinnacle of Web3 gaming, pretty much. And here we're just showcasing a small part of the game, uh, just the login system, notification system, and the character creator. That's going to be um, using a lot of uh, also proprietary tech, uh, especially when it comes down to technical animation. So, uh, what are we doing and how we are doing it? Uh, the game actually builds currently into just 80 megabytes. So when you download the game, you hit uh, download and install button, it's almost instantaneously, and you install basically just the base classes and everything that is pre-compiled. The game then fetches uh, a manifest that is being kept in IPNS, and from that manifest, it is aware of all the game features that are in it. Um, and uh, basically downloads anything that is being requested by the game to get downloaded and just pre-cache it as it goes. Uh, what it allows us to do uh, is uh, it is allowing us to um, automatically manage dependencies uh, and everything that uh, has to be loaded uh, basically automatically. Um, 
and we can we can ship and patch games uh, at runtime, and it doesn't need to really even restart the client uh, to download the latest features. Um, so we can make a build and ship it if we find a game breaking bug or a balance bug uh, within just one hour, maybe because we can make incremental builds of very specific features and we create an entire tool set that allows that. And we call that tool set uh, Chunker. So, basically what Chunker allows you to do uh, is to fragment your game into game features, which is just a, a generic feature of Unreal Engine if you want to make modular games that are easily managed just as files and uh, have large teams collaborating on stuff, you probably should be looking into modular gameplay features and using them uh, in your production, whether you are shipping in with uh, this tool or any other tool. Um, it allows you to uh, patch the games really fast uh, and it allows you also to uh, ship games really fast. It's something close to 160 lines of code that is just helping you with building and, and shipping games in a very easy way with a, a full UI. And uh, with this, you can pretty much ship anything that is content, so anything that doesn't get uh, just uh, being compiled into C++, so any data tables, any textures, any models, animations, uh, you name it, whatever, pretty much. The only re uh, time you have to actually uh, fully rebuild a game is when you're adding new plugins and completely new um, game elements in C++. Um, and also, this is kind of bypassing the CDN uh, of any distribution system. So if you have a game on Steam, uh, you can ship the minimal uh, viable installation file on Steam, so the aforementioned 80 megabytes pack, but the rest of the patching can be done directly through IPFS. And you don't have to upload those packs for verification and wait for them to actually be available to users. This is a very big issue, especially with multiplayer games, that if a development team finds a game-breaking bug, the average time to patching this bug just because of the build process and uh, the um, like everything that you have to do to actually ship that patch to users usually takes from one to three days. And we can do that within an hour. Um, and we built also, like I said, a, a graphical interface so it's very easy to use, very easy to track which features have been updated to which version. And through IPNS, we can track uh, a stack of incremental updates as it goes. So it also helps with preservation of games, which is a very high uh, topic right now. That there's a lot of games that are just being pulled down from the internet and they just cease to exist. With this, we can preserve the entire history of the game and all the packages and everything that was ever with it in. Amazing. So how does Toracha actually enable some of these use cases that Adam is talking about? Um, so Storacha, first of all, um, is an infinitely scalable object storage. So it's very easy to store like very large games, like all the content that Adam was just mentioning on, um, on Storacha. So you can build large performant games um, and you can distribute these binaries also through Storacha. Um, so Soracha being built on a uh, content addressability um, primitive enables automatically the deduplication and also uh, um, basically the easy patching because you're only basically retrieving um, the diff sets, right, to actually um, all the remaining ones that you had. Um, so it's really, really fast to also like do the patching and you're not losing all the content that's already cached on the CDN, for example. Um, then secondly, Soracha provides user-controlled decentralized permissioning. Um, using a concept called UCANs, which I'm not gonna deep dive now. I think we've got the experts there at the back. Hey, Brooklyn. Um, and so, which means that the user actually holds the private key to his in-game assets. Um, and he can share them theoretically, user to user directly, um, and doesn't need like approval by another server. Um, so, uh, especially like in the direction of, you know, user generated content that is truly user owned, um, that's kind of the future of gaming. Um, so yeah, fast game installs are supported through Storage CDN uh, at retrieval speeds and also lastly, as Adam mentioned, preservation actually of all 
the game binaries um, throughout all the versioning and updates uh, is done and backed up on Filecoin, so you don't really lose it. So how can you get started with Storacha today? Um, I think we just talked about like the Unreal plugin, the chunker, so feel free to check out that chunker with the documentation, which is really great. Um, you can use the Storacha CLI just to actually start playing with our storage if you want. Um, you can also use the JS client. And if you're a developer that likes other languages, you have to use, unfortunately, the HTTP bridge because of the UCAN invocations that are not supported in all of the other languages. <laughs> And so what's next for Storacha? Um, so Storacha is basically in the process right now of creating a federated storage network that is run on multiple trusted actors. So we might also reach out for, you know, to a couple of people who will potentially run initially some trusted nodes for us. In the second step, we will open up that network for anyone to per participate in a permissionless way. So that's probably gonna happen towards Q1 next year. If, if, if we're faster looking at HANA, then we can do it a little bit fast. Um, in the third step, um, we will be decentralizing the retrieval network first, um, as well as a trusted um, network, and then lastly, we'll open it up for public participation, potentially mid next year. So here we will utilize all the learnings that we have made from Saturn, running actually the largest decentralized CDN at scale before, and hoping to improve that, and hopefully use some IRO technology. Right, Brendan? Cool. Um, so we hope you enjoyed actually um, our use case presentation and actually the soft announcement by Adam. You know, the game is coming out in three months. Super excited. Um, and so if you want to build a top-notch game similar to this, and that's just the beginning, um, and you want to distribute it yourself, so and you know, without having to wait for your patches for three days and approval by Steam and other distribution platforms, then get started here. Um, Storacha is working in the open on Discord, so if you want to see all the, all the chats that we're having there, feel free to join. And uh, follow our socials and check out the GitHub. Thank you so much. <laughs>